Latin Chan. I just came from the ABCs of Attraction Boot Camp for Women. It was an incredibly informative session. I love the fact that it was hands on. We got to stand up and actually try stuff out. And as well, too, we really learned a lot about not just the opposite sex, but ourselves. So I think JT did an excellent job of covering a wide variety of topics. And I personally feel a lot more confident and a lot more empathetic at the same time. So this was a really, really informative session that I highly recommend for all genders. Insanely fascinated by the work that you do and so grateful that you are going to be sharing some information with our girls here today. What I love about the work that you do is that it's really actionable. I think oftentimes when it comes to women's dating, we get a lot of ideas, we get a lot of suggestions, but not like A, B, C, D. Here's a systematic approach you can take. And so when you're walking up to someone and you don't know what to say or do, you have something in the back of your mind you can rely on and call on at any time. And so I know that today is going to be jam packed full of really good stuff. And I cannot be any more excited to hand it over to my man, JT. Thank you. <laughs> that was a great intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ladies. I think it would have been cool if you were behind the screen. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Here I am. <laughs> Loud and proud. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, this is me when I was a, a wee lad, and I was very much a late bloomer. I didn't kiss my first girl until the age of 20. I am literally a rocket scientist. I used to work for uh, the Air Force, NASA. I worked in Mission Control Center launching rockets and satellites and spacecraft. So literally when people say like trying to figure out women, it is a little bit like rocket science, right? At least for me, because I was so confused. Um, and I started up what I called the Asian Playboy blog, which is like sex in the city, but for Asian men, right? And because there was no kind of repo repository of knowledge, especially, you know, for those of you in the Asian American community, when we're immigrants and we come out here, we have no idea how to date, right? Like what could my like stepfather who had been thrown into one of those uh, Vietnamese re-education communist camps tell me about dating in America? Absolutely nothing, and he didn't teach me anything. So I had to do it the hard way. And eventually, like I said, I started studying uh, psychology, pickup, just dating in general until I actually got like even like semi competent with women. So I've been at this for over 10 years. I've started the company ABCs of Attraction, and I'm very glad that Shan has invited me to speak to you ladies um, and teaching you the inside secret from the men's point of view. All right, hopefully, as they say, Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So I don't want you ladies to misuse what I teach you today, all right? <laughs> so joining us today is uh, Captain Daniel. Hi, everyone. All right. So Daniel uh, is a active military uh, captain uh, in the armed forces. And here you can see that at one point when he was a kid, he was very overweight. He was obese at over 230 pounds, right? He was bullied, picked on for both his weight as well as his race. So nowadays he is both a fitness, a leadership, and a relationship expert. Right? And he'll be retiring from the armed forces and joining the company full time because that's how much he believes in what we do when it comes to empowering not just our Asian brothers, but just people in general. Right? And out in the back is Jeff Kahn. He is our polyamorous expert as well as an active member in the kink fetish community. For you ladies that have questions about that, he's our go-to guy for that world. Right? So, uh, who are you ladies? Just really quickly, just to get an idea. Um, in your 20s, just raise your hands. All right, later than 20s, okay. How about, are you single? Anybody single? Okay. All right, so everybody's single. All right, I was about to say if you're in a relationship or you're like actively looking. All right, um, are you looking for short term? All right, how about long term? Something. Either or. I, I'm hoping for both. Hoping for both. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So today, what I told Shan that we're presenting is, have you met me? How you can date any man you want and make him think it was his idea. Does that sound pretty interesting to you girls? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Eva. Eva, GT. Nice to meet How's you. How's it going? All right. So what are your challenges and obstacles when it comes to dating? Like the modern woman faces, like kind of just chime in. What are you ladies facing uh, in today's dating? 
This is not a rhetorical question. Um, men actually approaching me instead of just staring at me? All right, so you want them to approach you. Yes. It's like, all right, you're checking out the goods, like, come on over. Yeah. Okay. Making them approach you instead of just stare. All right. Anybody else? Meeting men at different places, getting their number, getting the date, how to, on the date. You know, ghosting is an issue. Ghosting, okay, all right. Or just no, no, no effort. No effort. They're not really showing up uh, emotionally. Uh, or just out of this, this is doing it. And yeah. want giant for nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, something for nothing. Yeah. All right. All right. Anybody else? I'm just not interested in who's been approaching me, honestly. That's just not something that's interested in. The guys that approach you aren't like the quality type that you are looking for. I think they're quality. They've been quality men. I've been able to make friendships with them, but I'm just not interested past anything more than that just at this point in my life. But it, that might just be me. And okay. Like yeah, so. Okay, maybe it's either a case of either them not sparking it, or maybe you're just not in the right emotional, physical space yeah, to be receptive right, yeah. to that. Yeah, it's a little right. bit of both, so. Right, just trying to find yourself, like, where am I? Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to teach you ladies today is how to be more proactive and effective when it comes to meeting men, as opposed to like very passively, like you were saying, I'm standing there, I know you're looking at me, why don't you do something and come up, right? Is that sort of very similar experience that most of you ladies are having, where you wish they actually approached you instead of just stare? Okay, all right. So dating has changed. This is the 21st century, we're doing like technology and then changing dating mores. Here, I want to put you ladies in more of the active driver's seat, right? You girls are out there being a little bit more active hunters instead of just passively hoping something will happen. So I actually teach a very thorough methodology I call the ABCDF system for, for men. And I've repurposed this at the request of Shan to teach it to you ladies. And what I've come up with is the ABCD of attraction and dating for women. So first is approachable. B is bantering. C is compatibility. And D is date ability. Okay? It's a very simple kind of mnemonic device, right? Just A, B, C, D. What is this taking you through? Like just the first interaction or just leading you through? Going up to the date. So you're, if you're at a bar, a club, maybe you're at a park, and then to the process of conversation, getting the number, setting up the date, and actually going on it because at this point if I believe correctly you have taught them like body language fashion uh, internet dating and even like long-term relationship right was yeah, it, I think that was your list you haven't done body language yeah. yet okay all right so here we're trying to teach you the um, the in-person stuff, right? The, the very essential, what do you do when you're actually there with the person, right? So the goals of today is I wanna give you the tactics and techniques of just having more freedom and choosing instead of just being a passive participant in your own dating life. Uh, you're gonna do this by giving him the opportunity to be, to be the man that he is, as well as the woman that you are. All right, to actually step into that space of masculinity and femininity. Daniel, Captain Dan, talked a little bit about this because he's very big in the kind of energy that we bring into a relationship. All right, so has anyone heard about David Data, the way of superior man? So basically I took, I read his book and I actually took relationship workshops where he discussed Every one of us has a balance of mas masculine and feminine energy. When you hear masculine, you think it's just men. No, it's not true. When you guys are uh, in your careers, right? Some jobs dictate masculine energy. Masculine energy, you would say in a simple word, is just purpose, right? Feminine energy, even you right now, has masculine balance of feminine energy. And I do too, JT and even Jeff. We all have this energy, of, it's the yin and yang. And when it comes to attraction, right, it works. It's, one person needs to be in their masculine, and one person needs to be in their feminine. And when that occurs, sparks fly. So I'm gonna give a quick example, okay? So what is one superhero in like the 80s that every woman loved? 
It was a big movie that made multiple parts. Superman, there you go, right? So let's create a scenario where it gets a call from the president and says, Superman, we need you back. You need to save the world, right? So how would it play? Okay, I'll be right there. He goes to Lois Lane and says, hey, babe, I gotta go save the world. So in the scenario, let's say Lois Lane does this. He says, no, you said you're done with being Superman. Stay with the kids or I'm gonna divorce you. We're done, we're breaking up. What would Superman do? So, <laughs> so let's say he, Superman was in his masculine purpose, goal. My purpose in life, his purpose in life is to save the world. It's not Clark Kent. It's to save the world. So he's going to go. But let's say, same case scenario, Superman, come save the world. Hangs up, goes to his wife, Lois Lane, and like, hey babe, I got to go save the world. I just got a call. And Lois Lane says, no, you're staying with Chris, you promise you're done. And then he goes, okay, I'll stay with the kids. Like, in every workshop that I've been in, when I hear this story, most women cringe. Because as much as you guys think, you want him to stay with the kids and you, how it ends up is he comes back to save the world and Lois Lane is hugging him and kissing him. He's like, oh my gosh, you're my hero. Because he's in his masculine energy and his purpose. And when I'm, to sum it all up, I want to say this. At some point, I am, I'm saying your masculine energy is beautiful. That's how sometimes when in this world, you know, you go get stuff done, make things happen at work, right? But let's say your future boyfriend or the guy you're dating is in his masculine also so he comes back. At some point, women, I want you to realize what the feminine energy is. It's you guys, feminine energy, the grace, when, when you guys embrace that, that's what brings birth to this world. That is like the water, the powerful water, you can't stop it. So it's okay to go into feminine grace and let that out. And then when the man's in his masculine, at the same time, if he's a feminine man, do most of you guys want masculine or feminine man? Masculine. So it's okay. I need a little mix. Okay, a little mix, right? <laughs> so it's okay when you feel that polarity, shift into what you gotta do. And that is the summary of masculine and feminine energy. So, mm -hmm. where you're defining masculine as someone in their purpose, or is it more like, we're, we're not talking. I want to do. You know what I mean? What's well, like masculine is like very strong, like and like. Like getting shit done. Yeah, and, and it's, I don't think it's to say that feminine energy isn't that because I think it's both. But I think when you think of like masculine yeah. energy, you think of very headstrong, very willful. Yeah. Like when will you think strong but soft? Right. When we're using it in this term, we're not necessarily using it in like a gender identity. Right. Just in the like how like when you go to work, you've got to make sales, you got to interact, and you got to do like maybe engineering for those. I think someone said they were an engineer. And then when you get home, you still sometimes forget that you are taking that sort of behavior home, right? You're not actually being like the the other part of you that it might be like, hey, I want to. You know, slip into a bubble bath, you know, massage my man, get massage, that kind of deal, right? If I can just use that. Okay? So, A is for approachable. Empowering for a woman to learn how to approach men. I never really thought about this. Uh, so one of my friends, she is a lawyer and a model, and she wings sometimes on boot camps and helps my students like approach women. And we were in London, and we're just kind of like chilling at a club, and she's like, "Man, like the wrong guys are approaching me tonight." You ladies ever kind of felt that, like the wrong type of guys? It's like, I wish that guy would approach me. I'm like, okay, sure, let's do it. And this is literally what I did. I like to call. Have you met Ted? No, 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 we're not playing. Have you met Ted? Hi, have you met Ted? <laughs> Hi. I'm Ted. Yes, me. It's a very pretty name. So I did like, have you met Lucy? <laughs> right? And I just did that. Like, she was like so like on the spot. It's like, wait a minute, I gotta have, have to have a conversation now. And so I kept doing that the entire night. And Lucy was like so jazzed by it. It's like, hey JT, you see that football player with like 10 Victoria's Secret models? Go get him for me. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? And later on, like she was telling me, it was one of the most empowering things that she felt. Cause usually, you know, Lucy, she gets approached a lot. Right? She's very bubbly, she's, you know, attractive, very smart, but she's always like a passive person. Right? Here for the first time, she just pointed at someone and I just went up, talked to him, grabbed him, you know, we talked sports. Yo, man, how's it going? Yeah, you know, see the football game? Cool. Hey, you know, have you met my friend Lucy? Yeah, yeah, let me introduce you. Boom, like that. 
right? So she got all these collection of numbers. She dated even one of the guys kind of semi-seriously while she was in London. And it's interesting because I never thought about it, like how that was so empowering for her to have that choice, right? Because I'm, as a guy, I'm the one always doing the approaching, right? But what would it actually look like if women approached men? This is look kind of familiar, <laughs> right? That might be a little bit creepy, but like you girls have been on like the receiving end of that, haven't you? <laughs> right? So the truth is, as much as it would be great for women to approach men, because I, I would love that, right? But realistically, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So the role of, of who approaches, who initiates, is the men. Right? But can I get a raise of hands? Who here has actually approached a guy that they were interested in? Just like, just a few of you. Okay. All right. Oh, actually, it looks like a bit more. Um, do you do it on a regular basis? Like every night you go out? You? Often a lot, yeah. Okay. All right. I like this girl. She's very assertive. She's a go getter. I like her. All right. But in general, it sounds like you, know, you occasionally do it, but it is not regular. It's not an active uh, practice for you. Okay. So, have you ever had to hit a man over the head that you liked him? Like, he seems like completely oblivious, right? I have, but it's usually because he didn't like me back. Okay. Like, if I had to get to that point, it was usually the next conversation was like, hey, I think you're real cool, man. I'm just not feeling it, so. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I know for me and my students, I was completely, like, say, clueless. I didn't kiss my first girl until the age of 20. And the thing was, you know, clueless, um, was we were in college and she, it was, we were watching a movie in my dorm room, me and all my friends from college, and it's like midnight and she's still there, all my friends have left. I'm like, okay, like why are you here? <laughs> it's like, why are you still here, right? She, I would just see the end of the movie. Like 2 a.m. goes by, I'm like, why are you still here in my room? I gotta go to sleep. Don't you have to study or something, <laughs> right? And it was only until later, like, wait a minute, she likes me. I was like, who knew, right? I was so clueless. She had hit me over the head. So uh, for a lot of guys, we just don't know, right? Obviously, some of you ladies have experienced guys, men, who are more confident, who do approach regularly, and I'll talk about that. But imagine. If you will, ladies, if you're just like an everyday guy, not like some super suave kind of guy, not a pickup bar, it's just like an every, everyday guy, total average Joe, really good person, you know, might make a totally great boyfriend, husband, quality guy, but he isn't just like super aggressive, like he goes out to the bars like, yeah, I'm going to get laid kind of deal, right? So, I'm going to show a couple of different scenarios and I want you ladies to rank on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay. How difficult, from the man's point of view, would it be to approach these group of women? When women, or one, is it so easy, he's just like, can you, just, you know, as fast as fast can be, and ten, they're crying in the middle of the club. You laugh, but I've literally had students end up just breaking down and crying, and they could not move. Okay? And that happened, like, this year, too. <laughs> like, it was like, yeah, it happens. More than you think. So, scenario one. You're if your group of girlfriends, a whole bunch of them. She's got a one to ten. How difficult is this for a guy to approach by himself? Oh, so nice. Two, three, eight. Like a three. A three. <laughs> you think it's that easy? Well, he's got a book. Yeah. Yeah. Like friendly. But is, it, <laughs> but is it one guy? Go, one guy. No, that's like a pack of women yeah. who's walking into <laughs> embarrassment between like, a lot of other It's not like a full team because, because, because they're like, like relaxed. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> All right. From an everyday man's point of view, again, someone that isn't like totally into pickup, it's just like average, right? This is a 10. Mm -hmm. There's like a huge group of women there. And it is a very rarefied skill for a man to come into a large group of women and entertain everybody and not get like cock blocked by some girls like, no, I don't want him there. He's too short. He's Asian. We're like, whatever excuse they say, right? We were talking. Yeah. Exactly. It's a girl's night out. No? All right. This is a 10. Okay? How about this? A little bit smaller group going to the bar, ordering drinks. You've all been in this situation. 
This is a good one. That's a 10. Yeah? yeah I'm just cool. curious. Why do you think it's a 10? Pretty white girls. Pretty white girls. <laughs> They're pretty mean. race. Mean. Yeah, the whiteness look nice, right? I'm <laughs> <laughs> not entertained by her champagne. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fair, fair. You're right. This would be a 10. All right? That's she going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> very kind of very chill, sitting down, not too loud, right? Smaller group of women. Unless you're that dude, it's a ten. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, like if you're that dude with the blonde hair, hair, it's like a five. Yeah. yeah. You just, that's true. And he's closer. Right. Right. So if it's a guy like over here, it's like I see a girl. All right. Five. He goes over. It's a ten. It's a ten of difficulty. Oh. How about they're they're have a little bit more open body language and they're laughing. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is easy. It's a 10. What? That's a 10. It's a 10. You know for sure they're like talking about someone's divorce. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? It's just two of your girlfriends having wine and your body language is like pretty open. Ten. It's a 10. What? How about girls oh. checking out men? That's a 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. It's 10. How about if it's two of you and one of you is talking to a guy and you're by yourself while you're waiting for your friend to get done hitting on this guy. Three. Nope, it's a 10. Because in his mind, he's gonna be like, his boy, her boyfriend is gonna kick my ass if I go in. Really? What? Yes. What you talk, you're talking to the little wolf, right? The one? Yes. So it's a 10 because there's a guy there. Why? Why? I've been approached so many times. Like, really? <laughs> we're talking about the everyday guy. We're not talking about the guys that are like really experienced in a bar setting. All right. How about a girl surrounded? She's by herself, but she's surrounded by a bunch of dudes. She's done. Yeah. Is it ten? That's a ten. Is it ten? How about girl by herself, not talking to a guy, but she's surrounded by guys. Like I've never seen that. That's like a four. It's a ten, because he has competition looking. But isn't sperm competition good? Again, you're talking about a very analytical meta level, not when a guy is at a bar club and having these like. When we talk about this, like the emotional state, the fear that comes with talking to a random stranger, right? And here is like a happy girl by herself. What do you think the everyday guy might think of this difficulty? That's a 10. <laughs> I've literally had guys break down crying. Like, your experience right now, probably the guys approaching you, are guys that are experienced at approaching. It's a learned skill. It is not an inherent character trait. It's a learned skill. So you're, you're, you're basing like what you believe, are like these are what all men do based off of the, the men who are approaching you. Which, if you think about it, is actually a, is a very small number of men in the world. So here's a secret about men, okay, when it comes to approaching. Now, I'll tell you this in the form of a story by one of my clients. He was in the military. He was in the army, and he was stationed in Afghanistan, hunting down like the Taliban, Al Qaeda, you know. And he was telling me this story about why he was so scared, and he explained it in this story. He was in an MRAP, which is like an up-armored Humvee. He's out there in like some, you know, the, the, the mountain pass, right? And all of a sudden, this RPG, this rocket-propelled grenade, blows through the front window, destroys the back where the radio is. And apparently, coming under machine gun fire, when you are being ambushed, you don't simply hunker down. You have to charge under fire to the people that are trying to kill you. Because when you're being ambushed, you cannot hunker down because that's exactly what they want. So he jumps out, him and his squad, and they charge directly into machine gun fire from like the, you know, the Taliban. And he says, JT, I'd rather get shot at by Al-Qaeda and the Taliban than talk to and approach a girl. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? You'd rather be under machine gun fire than face the fear of approaching a woman? Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> no, no. Here's the thing. It's like there's a physical, you know, obviously injury, whatever. Like that's a finite thing. When a guy imagines, he goes, you know, into this vortex. And then the same thing with women. Like you imagine these scenarios. So the idea of the brain with neuroplasticity, right? You keep imagining the rejection. 
Remand gets rejected, and he keeps imagining that rejection. He keeps imagining it and imagining it and imagining it, and the brain cannot tell the difference between real rejection that might have happened only once that night, or the 10 or 100 times he thinks about it in bed when he's feeling humiliated. It literally, to his brain and to his body, feels like a hundred women rejected and humiliated him. And it's not just men, it's, it's other scenarios too. Again, the brain can't tell the difference. Right? So not all men have that fear. But again, think about it. Like, the majority of men aren't like approach machines. It's a learned skill that, that a small percentage of men have learned in order to be successful. So the other secret is there is no correlation between the character and quality of a man and whether he has the confidence to approach you or not. There's no correlation, at least in my opinion. If he has the confidence to approach you, that's like riding a bicycle. He just learned how to ride a bicycle, so he is now confident at riding a bicycle. Does it make him a better boyfriend because he can ride a bicycle? Does it make him a better husband or a lover? So inside every Clark Kent, there's an Asian Superman. <laughs> now, I present to you our mascot. He's an actual client. He is, and I shit you not, a doctor, a male model, and an actor. He's literally a triple threat. And he took my 101, I'm like, Dude, you are so good looking. Why do you need my help? He's like, because I'm scared of women. Even though he was like, literally he did this print magazine for some Korean runway and he like got paid $10,000. Like he's literally $10,000 good looking. I'm not even $10 good looking, <laughs> right? So, just because a guy can't approach doesn't mean he doesn't have some inherent like quality to him. It, approaching is just a learned skill. So you're selling yourself short, ladies, if you're limiting yourself to the men who do the approaches, right? Basically, aren't you tired of dating losers, assholes, and douchebags, right? Raise your hand if you're tired of these kind of guys. <laughs> yeah? Only, only, only a few of you, all right. <laughs> all right. So at the ABC's of Attraction, I teach men a system Right, an actual like full blown like you know a total funnel when it comes to like building lifestyle with girlfriend, you know whether they have like relationship. Like I am the only dating coach as far as I know uh, that has officiated a client's wedding, right? So there's a documentary about that. So we run the entire gamut. For you ladies, I'm going to teach you. I'm breaking the bro code here for you ladies. All right. Mm -hmm. So. In my viewpoint, you ladies can correct me, the major difference between the dating pool of men and women is for women, you can't really help who approaches you, right? If, he, if it's the guy you like, great, but is it always going to be the guys that you like? No. You can't help but have a very wide dating pool, but it's very shallow. The fact that you might have just a bunch of assholes, losers, creeps that hit on you, but you don't necessarily have the depth of option that you want. Does that sound like any of you ladies? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Men is a little bit different. Like, you know, in order for us to get out of the dating game, what do we have to do? We stay home and play Warcraft. Right? We're, we're done. <laughs> right? Um, so we have to, like, intentionally try to grow it. And that's what I teach, teach my guys. So in this case, I'm gonna to try to teach you ladies how to grow yours instead of just being dependent upon who decides to take a swim in your pool. Um, and I'll just give you a, a quick little thing. When I started this, when I had to learn how to get over my terrifying, petrifying fear of approaching women, one of the things I would do is, as a former aerospace engineer, literally rocket science, I would go to like Saddle Ranch and there's like this mechanical bull and I would go up to ladies and I would say like, hey ladies, who's sexier? A rocket scientist or the mechanical bull operator? You know what they said? The bull? 100% of the women said the mechanical bull operator. <laughs> Not one woman in my entire lifespan has ever said the rocket scientist is sexy. <laughs> You ask yourselves this amongst each other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, get, get, you know, 
I know that the context is obviously like Saddle Ranch is a bar, but it, you know, it was an exercise for me to get over my fear, but it also sort of let me understand, like a lot of you ladies don't understand necessarily that uh, you want a guy that's confident, so you, you know, you want him to approach you, but that doesn't make him like an inherently better man, right? So it's about giving yourself more dating options by choosing who you want to date based off of his character rather than just because he learned a set of skills, right? So like, you know, here's like a, a, a class that I've taught. These guys were literally lawyers, doctors, a fireman, millionaire in this picture, right? There are more high quality men who do not approach women. Just by sheer numbers, right? More quality men that don't approach women than there are that do approach women. So what does it mean to be approachable? So I've kind of given you guys, you ladies, the perspective, the male perspective, of what it means to approach, and you know the fear that goes into it, what we have to do in order to be successful. But you ladies, if you're not going to approach, which it's great if you do, but realistically, that's probably not going to be a regular uh, occurring action. So what does it mean to be approachable? So one, you want to put yourself in a low traffic area. This is like nighttime stuff, but it'll, some of it can be transitioned into a daytime. If you're in the, the middle of the bar and you're surrounded by people, he literally has to start like elbowing people out of the way in order to get to you, right? You don't think about this, but it takes a lot of effort to get to a woman when she's in a high traffic area. Uh, position yourself for eye contact. If your back is to everybody, you obviously can't see people. You can't give them like a hint, like, hey, come over here. Uh, make eye contact. Trying to make, you know, psychologists say that women who are interested in men will give eye contact three separate times for three seconds, right? But here's the problem. I've literally had this happen to me when girls look at them like, or the guy behind me, like me, or, like I have no idea, right? You want to have open body language, smiling, right? Uncrossed arms, uncrossed legs, leaning in, held to the you know, purse down, not like kind of clenched here, like clutching your pearls. Um, if he's shorter than you, I can't remember the last time I dated a woman that was shorter than me. Like I date all tall women. And there's this concept of out of sight, out of mind. If you are talking to a shorter guy, sit down, lean on something. The fact that it stops being such an obvious height difference, it makes him feel less insecure about it, right? And it is a big deal. Like, you know, it's like one of the biggest things, like, you know, like height, in my experience, plays more of a factor in dating than like race does, right? So again, though, just like approaching, just because a guy is tall or short does not inherently make him a higher quality or lower quality guy, just because he happened to have this set of, you know, chromosomes. Uncrossed legs would be more approachable? Yes. I mean, at least this is what psychologists say, okay. right? But the point of this is, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like base instant. No. Um, it's the idea of like going like this, right? This is very like standoffish, very like defensive posture. When in groups, right? You're, you go for a group of your girlfriends, your friends, right? Super common. Position yourself on the outside. Again, if you're in a high traffic area and where men have to like push their way through to you, like they're not gonna elbow your girlfriend to the face to get to you, right? Even if you're looking on point that night, that's just not gonna happen. Um, if you're with a guy friend, but yes, sometimes you want a guy friend to just like, you know, blow up the, the, the creeper guys, right? Probably you have that with your bros. Uh, but sometimes if you're interested in a guy, he might take up that sort of protective role and you might like, no, 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 it's just like disarm. It's okay, I wanna to talk to this guy, right? Because not everybody, um, it's what we call like amogging alpha male of the other group. Um, especially as an Asian guy, I get harassed a lot by white males, like every weekend. Like, so I get like, you know, guys that want to like harass me because I'm with a girl. And so a lot of guys are not going to put themselves in a position to get into a physical fight with someone. Some men are skilled enough, they're used to it, they know how to disarm it, handle other guys. But 
that's even a more rare fight skill than just approaching. Okay. Have fun, be playful, match his energy. Like if he's like laughing and he's like having a good time, you know, be there. You don't want to be like too high because that puts him under pressure to try to like, you know, get as, as energetic as you. But at the same time, you don't want to be like, hey there, what's your name? Like Eeyore, right? You want to like have a, a, a steady equilibrium. So openers, what we call openers, these are like icebreakers. These are more incidental ways for you ladies to start a conversation with a guy. One, you ask, basically you ask for a favor. Like, hey, uh, I could really use your help with something. Men love that. So you, you know, should just, be ambiguous? You shouldn't be specific? Yeah. Um, sometimes, and this can be dependent upon the social context of the man, whether the location, but sometimes when a girl, like, just flat out indicates like massive interest. We start looking around, it's like, is this an escort? <laughs> right? It's like, seriously, it's like, we kind of think, wait, he's like, wait a minute, I didn't do enough to earn this. Like, there's a part of like, uh, you know. Um, but they basically do anything that asks for help, okay? It kind of appeals to that male ego, right? Uh, could you pass me a napkin? Just asking anything for his like manly help. Uh, asking a basic question When does this place get busy? What drink do you recommend? How are the drinks? What is it that you're drinking? For example, you ask the question, someone responds. Okay, that's the end of it. You walk away. No, no, we're just at A. Okay. We were talking about B and then C. Uh, All right, here is like approaching to be approached or for you to actually start approaching men. So again, that's a great question. We will address it in B and C. And this is like incognito approaching. So you're not approaching with the intent of like, hey, you look really nice tonight. You know, I'm kind of talking for a second. Like you're not doing that. You're just. Yeah, because a lot of times. Innocuous. Yeah, a lot of times, um, and this isn't going to be case for every man, but a lot of times the man will think, okay, like this is so outside of my realm. <laughs> of experience that this there's something wrong with this scenario because they've never been approached because again we're imagining that you're thinking approaching a guy that's like sort of not like Zac Efron or like someone like super good looking super confident and is like an approach machine you're looking at guys that are more like um, the hidden gems presumably at least maybe you do want Zac Efron God bless you <laughs> right um, okay so we're going to play a game, all right? So Captain Dan, step up, and we're going to have you approach Captain Dan. All right, you want to explain the scenario? So basically, I'm going to be the guy. What you're going to do is I'm going to act on you. Okay, so based on what you learn in the A. I'm going to decide to approach you. I'll approach you. But it depends. There's a lot of things we went over, right? So there's going to be different scenarios. So each person will have a different scenario. But eventually I'll make a decision. And you guys also get to use what we learned to approach me. You want him to feel like, he wants to feel like he still came to talk to you. So the first thing that we kind of talked about, yes, we showed you tactics when the first part doesn't work, when he doesn't approach you. Okay? When that doesn't work, then, but we also showed ways for you to be approached. So always focus on be approachable and then you have tools now to have him approach you or you approach him. He's really a keeper, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shan, you want to, I guess, play act first? Yes. Okay. I'm saying. All right. So you're at a bar and you see this, this, so, you know, he's a, a man in uniform, maybe. So I'm just doing one more thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, have you heard this class is any good? Oh, yeah, I mean, I heard it got good Yelp reviews. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, by Shane? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your earrings on the way. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, of course. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. There you go. Right? See how easy that uh, was? All right. Now, what about one of you ladies that said you don't approach? You guys want to, one of you guys want to do that? Anyone else want to volunteer? It's a game. It's like role playing, right? Just literally use one of the lines from the thing. You don't have to think of something new. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
<laughs> See, like, you girls are that scared. Imagine a guy yeah. trying to approach. If you're this scared in a classroom setting. So, I want you guys to also be in this practice mode, right? We can learn all the lecture we want, but one thing why we do in ABCs is we can do lecture. We can do this for three days straight, but we make sure they go. They have to go and practice. And this is something in my request of you is to just practice, just practice. This is the safest place. It's safe, right? No judgment, no nothing. So who's up? Who's next? Who's next? <laughs> so do you have about everyone remember some of the openers that we had? Uh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she wants to go? All right, hand on. Something. Do you mind if um, you can pass me that now? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get a lot of that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Your name? I'm Daniel. Daniel, nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're, You're really such an awesome manager. Like, I'm going to not help you. Because <laughs> I'm a person in need. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm actually originally from Dallas, Texas. Okay. I love it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> He's ready to get out there, pick up some men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyone else want to go? That was great. That was great. Okay. Okay. How about how about how about this? Steph, Let's, this next one. Do you want to inspire? Huh? Do you want to go, Steph? What? You no. brought a friend. You inspired. No. She, no. Yeah. no. So how about let's practice, now we had two women approach me first, let's work on how to be approachable, let's be example of being yeah. approachable, right? Don't, don't that'd be great. Be yeah, so that'd be a lot easier. So. That's more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember everything we talked about yes. people, right? Okay. So I'm like facing out. <laughs> 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 there it is. There. <laughs> okay. It was it was nerve wracking. Yes. Okay. And you knew he wasn't gonna reject you. <laughs> I, well, yeah, because he was. <laughs> so the primary takeaways for A is one, you can choose the men that you want to attract. Two. Be open inside and out. Personality, body language, be open. And three, have three openers or responses ready. Okay? Be ready. All right? Here's the thing. You ladies think about like the guys that approached you. Odds are, yes, some of them are socially savvy enough to create a situational opener on the fly. They're just that really experienced in the social arena, right? But we know what we call those kind of guys, right? But other guys, they sometimes memorize stuff. Because when you are as scared as Steph was, it's really hard to try to come up with something on the fly. So, just have something in your back pocket, right? Maybe it's the napkin one, I love that one, right? It's like, oh my God, my outfit. <laughs> All the hair flips too. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> All right, so B, all right, now we're approachable or you have approached him. B, we're going into bantering after the, like, hi, my name is, right? Bantering. What is bantering, all right? This is when you start training him, ladies. <laughs> you start training him as to what you want in the conversation. You're going to set the pace and you're going to set the guardrails here. What's the most common dating advice in the world? Be yourself. Be yourself. 
be fucking confident, right? That's what everybody says. Just be yourself, be confident. It is the worst, best advice ever. Mm -hmm. right? Worst, best advice ever because it is completely true but what happens when you meet a stranger? You put, you, you put on a show. You get nervous. Your walls come up. Mm -hmm. Alright, you try to impress her. There's a lot of different things, right, that occur both in the man and the woman. So you have approached or been approached. The part of this is to get him to relax. You're going to create a safe space for him to lower his walls so he can be himself around you. What's going on in the inside for a lot of guys? Not every guy, but sometimes that's what it feels like. He's just trying not to freak out in front of you. All right? So, get him to relax. Have fun. All right? There's a little bit of... Oh, I like this. Mm, all right. <laughs> cold reading. You guys ever heard of cold reading? It's an idea like, like psychics and people are just really good at body language. They just read something about you and they make an assumption. And you're like, oh, you know what? I can tell sometimes you're really confident, but sometimes when you're in a crowded room, you feel all alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's like you can happen to everybody, right? So you can cold read. Mm -hmm. Hey, you don't seem like you're from LA. You're too real. Like how many people are actually from LA? Like two people, three here, right? Most people in LA are not from LA. Like this is something you can use from anybody, right? Realistically. Um, here's the thing. If he's the kind of like the awkward or silent type, right? Acknowledge that without putting him, embarrassing him. It's like, oh, you're, you're strong and silent. I like that, right? Because he's probably not the strong, silent type. He's probably just freaking out, right? And he just doesn't want to lose his cool by saying something stupid. Be willing to fill in the silence. Like, you know, I really love XYZ, whatever. Whatever kind of values, activities that come to mind, see if he matches you, all right? See if he comes back with something. Show interest by asking questions. You know, you can do like the, the standard very, you know, blasé, get to know you questions. What are your hobbies? Where are you from? Right? They're more interesting questions and something I'll talk about when we're in like D. Um, but you know, start somewhere. Okay. Flirting. The idea is you're gonna compliment but tease. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, with that shirt, your eyes really stand out. I like your fashion sense, but is there anything more about you I should know? Right? It's a compliment but tease. Uh, if a man puts in the effort to look good, like compliment that. Right, he, you know, you see, like he does. He is paying attention to detail, at least, as opposed to someone just lucky enough to have won the genetic lottery and is that good looking, right? There is a difference between a guy who is good looking versus a guy who looks good. One you cannot control, one you can. All right. I wish we were all tall, dark, and handsome, but I have had to learn how to settle for being short, stunning, and smooth. Right. <laughs> The shyer the man, the less the teasing, okay? In his mind, it can come off as like you're making fun of him. Again, these are the kind of guys that could be great men, but aren't really used to just introducing and talking to a complete stranger, okay? Give them a chance to lead by making suggestive statements. I heard this other bar had really good drinks. You should go check it out. Like, you know, you're giving him a chance to be that man to lead you somewhere else. Like this bar, this music is starting to suck. You just say like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we went to the next bar I heard is like really good music. All right. And here. We should go like, does we should go do more than just hint? Because now you've actually led. Right. You have, but part of leading is also where physically one person leads the other. You can make all the verbal statements. <laughs> But if like someone doesn't start walking, it's it's still not really leading, right? Here you're giving the idea like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I should totally like she seems into it, like you know, like you know, grab a, grab a, grab you by the hand, um, and then move over. Uh, you'd be like, hey, I have to use your restroom, right? Um, please hold my spot. I'll be right back for it. As opposed to being like the entire bathroom excuse, like hey, I got to use your restroom and you never come back, right? <laughs> 
Uh, now, if you're drinking, right, you know, I'll get the first round or you get the first round and we'll exchange whatever it is. Um, XYZ Diner has the best burger, best salad, whatever it is, you know, I've got to show you. Again, you're letting him start to think that it's his idea, right? He's like, oh my God, she really likes these vegan burgers. Yeah, I should probably like take her there because she seems into it. Like, okay, all right, I'll get the Uber, right? He's got to start making these steps. Throw in lead-ins to other multiple conversations, right? Um, what is everybody's favorite topic? Themselves. Exactly. <laughs> Themselves. Like me, right? Start talking about them. Obviously, you hope that they don't, you know, are so narcissistic. They just end up only talking about them. But again, we're talking about guys that aren't going to be like that natural type player that's narcissistic. Be playful. Have fun with the conversation. Laugh at the jokes if he's trying to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. But don't use a fake laugh if it's like it's generally like not funny, right? We can tell. Uh, avoid sarcasm at first. It's great for those of you who are like kind of like more East Coast that have that sarcasm. But on the first meeting, it's really hard to tell if you're just joking or you're just kind of being like LA snotty. Right? Same thing with really self-deprecating sense of humor, like putting yourself down. In the beginning, avoid that. Later on, cool, get to know each other, you have a more sense of who you are to one another. But in the beginning, he doesn't know if you are you just have that kind of sense of humor or you just have low self-esteem. Right? And as I say, avoid religion, politics, death. Kino is what we call kinesthetics, the the art of touching. Right? Um, in general, whether you realize it or not, women are significantly more touchy-feely than men are. You just are. It's like, as a guy, it's like, I have these boundaries, like, okay, I only like, like certain people touch. But as girls, you are more touchy-feely than you might actually think of. And there are certain like maneuvers that I have learned to recognize over the year that to this day I still react to, even though I know exactly what she's doing. There's, there's like that um, uh, one maneuver where a girl, like if Shannon could step up really quickly, I, I, this happened like, at Laurel Hardware, and I knew exactly what she was doing, but I couldn't help it. And she just kind of like grabbed my bicep. I'm like, and I just started flexing. <laughs> I just started like, like, I knew exactly what she was doing, but I just, I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh, when you want to like touch his, his, his pecs, his mighty pecs, you're like, oh, you're like, oh, right? We just can't help it. Right? Do me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? There's like the hand touching. The idea is if you like this guy, if you like the direction of the bantering, again, remember, you're training him. You're training him. If you like the direction, reward him with Kino because he knows that this conversation is going in the right direction. Because if he doesn't get it, some guys aren't going to be like naturally confident enough to say like, okay, she's totally into me. Like, oh, you know, she's, she's totally like turned her back to me. She's not talking to me, but she's into me. Like there, you'll have some guys that delusional, <laughs> right? But other guys just need that, that big hammer on the head. Okay, train them. Um, bantering is all about disarming that initial reaction that men have around like women they fancy. Whether he's just shy around women, right? You give him like the, the lead him to the point where like he feels comfortable not only joking around with you, talking with you, but also maybe, you know, sitting down or going to a different place with you, okay? Um, trying to, or, you know, disarming that when some guys, they're with a girl, they just kind of put in that, that persona, it's like, yeah, yeah, right? That little pickup persona, right? You want to disarm that. Or just the guys that are trying to impress you. Again, B is about bantering, having a fun, right? So he lowers his guard. You get him to feel emotionally safe around you. To know how you want to banter. Know kind of like where you want to direct the conversation. And again, you're going to use flirting to create that sort of safe playground experience when we're all little boys and little girls and little boys pulled on the pigtails of little girls, right? You want to create that, that fun but safe environment when we all felt safe as children. All right. So let's play another game, all right? Honestly, it really gets harder to learn. You're done, right? Yeah. All right, John. Yes, Now, what am I doing? So basically, you're you're gonna flirt with me. You're gonna. We're gonna oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you're not even trying, remember? <laughs> 
<laughs> so we have we have lines, right? We can work down some of the lines. Just use any of the lines, right? So I'm just gonna do what I normally do as a guy. I just gotta You've already engaged in a conversation. Yeah, we already, you already, I put, or you've already said hello. Sorry, but this conversation is starting to die out, right? So based on the situation, same thing. Like lead-ins, lead-in questions, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, do you come here? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, are you celebrating something? What are you doing? With you? Um. Uh, Learning how to pick up guys, you know, just Okay, okay, the usual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is pretty much... This is where you gotta say a line. That's <laughs> <laughs> important. Doing the banter right now. Ask him what he's doing. What, what brings you here? Oh, um, you know, just, you know, just with friends. Just want to celebrate life, you know, just have fun. Oh, what's going what on? Uh, well, it's, it's my friend's birthday. He's turning 21. He's my like my little brother though. Like I'm his mentor. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a little brother? No, I'm the baby of the family. Oh, you're the baby. Yeah. Okay, cool. Pass the touch. Like you know, pulling teeth in the beginning there. So, uh, are you open to a suggestion? Yes. So one of the things, right? It kind of died down there, right? So let's say you want to talk to this guy down. This guy doesn't have game. Like he, he needs support, right? He needs that support. Just be like, you know what I love about something X Y Z? I love going to an event with friends and just enjoying the music. Too. And then, and then you start asking him what the food is. But you gotta support him because he's passionate about something, right? You can just kind of beat him a little bit. But let's say he loves food just like you. He's like, oh, what's what's the what's one food you love? And then you talk about countries, and it's just like it's like improv, right? He just supports you. That's something you do. So you talk about what you love first, and you're energetic, and then law of energy. And you know, we have fun talking about it. So what do you love? What do you love? Does that sound like not talking about it? So what do you love? So first you would say, no. oh. yeah, you would say I love something. Oh. Yeah, and then and then maybe you know I could come in and be like, oh wow, you love. I didn't know you love that. You know what I mean? So like say something about. I really love Indian food. Indian food. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Not a lot of people say that. What do you love about it? It's spicy. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Oh, okay, it's spicy. It's really food. flavorful. What do you like? Um, I actually like spicy food too. I love like seizing the kick in your mouth and stuff. Have you actually cooked spicy food yourself? Mm. <laughs> gotcha. And then that's where you support leaving in transitions to somewhere else. Because yeah, I'm supposed to leave, but some men are just like, right there, I, if I'm not confident, I'm like, ooh, conversation died. Right? I mean, it's just gonna die. Yeah. That's where, like, but I like cooking desserts. You see how you leave in the next conversation? Okay. Got it. Shan? Priscilla? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, this is a really, it's a really cool bar. Have you come here a lot? Um, no, no, actually, this is my first time here. But oh. I really like the music. Okay. Oh, the music is more like deep house, huh? So, you, is it deep house rap? What's your? It, it's more along the lines of hip hop dance. Hip hop dance. Oh, yeah. hip hop. Man, I think I'm deaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hip hop. Yeah, I mean, more along the lines of dance hall. Oh, dance hall, okay. I, mean, I don't really know how to dance to it, but I like to watch. Oh, you know what's crazy? I don't know how to dance, but I took a salsa lesson yesterday. Did you? Yeah, do you do anything like that? No, but you know, there is some classes that I'm looking into. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Would, I mean, I mean, I, I take one, right? I, I, I do a dance class. Yeah, but I might be a little too shy. Oh, you're a little shy? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I'm a beginner, you're a beginner. Mm -hmm. So, you go together and have fun together. So you left me on a few? Yeah, yeah, just join that bond, have fun. Or just have fun, right? Right, right. Would you be interested in that? 
Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Okay, that's the same thing. Go! No, it's good. You let me in. I love it when I touch it. So let's say hey, let's go to C compatibility. All right. You've uh, been approached or you have approached him. You're bantering, creating a safe space, safe emotional space for him to just be himself, right? Not trying to be either nervous around you, um, not trying to impress you. Now you got to see whether or not this is going to go somewhere because compatibility is about time. <laughs> so Ain't nobody got time to not be compatible, <laughs> right? If you're not compatible with him or he is not compatible with you, call a night, move on. He doesn't want his time to be wasted and you don't want to waste your time, okay? So encourage him to lead. Hey, my high heels are killing me. Do you think we could sit over there? Or are you, is there a place we could sit, okay? Hold his hand. Or go arm in arm, right? Just like, you know, he's walking and just kind of slip your, your arms in between his, like in, at the elbow. You know what? The promenade. Um, if you're comfortable, go somewhere a little bit more quiet, right? Because if you're standing at the bar, what's happening? Other people around you are bumping into you, right? And he's like, people are listening. He might feel a little bit self-conscious. So encourage him like, oh man, my, my feet hurt. You think that couch over there is free? So, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, I'll follow you, right? Just like, go, man, go. Because how likely are you to have a deep conversation sitting or standing in front of everybody at the bar? Sitting, mm -hmm. right? Um, and again, find out if you're compatible. You're not there simply there to spin your wheels or you're not there for him to spin his wheels. Talk about commonalities. When he says something interesting, show it, right? Uh, touch on a range of topics. You can always come back, you know, see what he's interested in, see what you guys can find common ground on. Travel, science, family, hobbies, food, pop culture, you know, 
all these different areas where the both of you can talk about. Right. Beyond just like weather and the sports. Talk about what you're passionate about. Get excited about the things that you're actually excited about. Right? And there's something called like the, the idea like emotions are contagious. Right? And when you're enthusiastic about something, that bleeds off to the other person and they pick up on that. Vice versa. If they feel comfortable around you to display that hey, they're actually like kind of geeks or nerds and they, they really love to talk about quantum physics, about leptons and quarks and all that, and you're also into that, get enthusiastic. Relate to him on that, all right? Give him room to explore what he's interested in and excited about. Don't monopolize the conversation. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a fine balance, admittedly. The guy's kind of like one of those, again, shy, strong, silent types. It may be more natural for you to direct and control the conversation until he opens up and he starts like filling in the blanks, starts communicating more with you. Try to find common ground. Here's the thing. You don't want him to be like a yes man. Just basically say yes, he's interested in everything that you do. Because quite frankly, there's no person like that who's just interested in everything about you. You inherently know he's just lying just to get into your pants, right? Same thing, vice versa. You're not always saying yes to everything he's interested in. Find where you guys have common ground, where you're compatible with. And if there's no compatibility, you know, say, you know, nice meeting you, uh, you know, just take care, I gotta go return to my friend, or I gotta use the restroom, right? <laughs> qualify, for those of you in like business sales, qualify your leads. Know what, you know, you know what kind of guys I like? Guys that work out, guys that dance, guys that like, deep house, blah, 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 <laughs> right? See how he responds. See if he matches your qualities that you like in a man. You know what I like about certain things about guys is when they do this. I like guys that like kayak, guys that, that, that fly, guys that do karate, whatever it is, right? And see if he chimes in with a quality that is similar or that, all right? How would this work in a conversation? You would just say, like, if he's like, oh, I'm, I don't really dance. I'm like, I love guys who dance. <laughs> or just be out of the blue. Travel, right? It's like, I really love dancing. One of the things I want to learn is like salsa, right? It's like, oh, you know, I've, I've, never, I've never learned how to dance, but I was in Spain, right? You kind of, I mean, they're typically in a relationship, not like one, two, three deal breakers just because they don't like to dance or you know whatever. It's about just throwing things out there, sort of like spaghetti, cooking spaghetti. You throw it on the, the wall, see if it sticks, right? And again, if there's like nothing that you guys have in common with, at least you know now, and you don't have to waste your time, right? If you if you if your high qualities are he's got to be fit, he's got to be fashionable, he's got to have a career, like lay it out there, and then at least you find out like okay. He just shops at the Gap and works at the mall and stays at home with his mom. Like, I know that now, so I'm not gonna like end up in bed with him, right? Uh, I love men who are ABC, but I hate the guys that are XYZ. Just see what he says, right? You gotta qualify. Is, it, is this a good guy that you wanna spend more time with or not? I think a man who has the confidence to date a woman taller than him is pretty hot. Again, who here is pretty tall? All right, you get quite a few of you. Do you restrict yourself to men who are like taller than you? Yes, I do. All right. I don't. Yeah. Try to do now. Good enough for you, right? Um, again, there is no inherent character, plus or minus, based off of someone's height, right? But it is a social pressure thing that says women need to date men that are taller than them. It's also the same social pressure, for example, that says like X race should only stick to X race. I'm just saying. It's also preference. True, true, right? There's that physical attraction, but again, if you are in more in the pursuit of maybe a short term thing, that's uh, at a higher value premium. Right. But if you're looking for someone like the quality and if this guy is like perfect, are you gonna judge somebody by superficial? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot of these depends on the context of where you're at in your relationship hunt, your hunt for men, right? Um, again, when it comes to race, right? Uh, you appreciate a man that can think outside the box, right? See if there's anything about him that's a deal breaker. See if there's anything about you that's a deal breaker to him. 
So at least you know and you're not like, you get fooled by it, right? Or he gets fooled by it. Now, screen, right? You're gonna screen as well as manage expectations. A good one is like, why are you still single? Right? It's a joke and a compliment at the same time. And it lets you know if he's single. Uh, presumably if he's being honest, right? Uh, find out if there are activities you both like. This is where you're going to start like seeding the date idea. Because if you know you're both foodies, if you both know that you like to go on like fitness or, or bike trails or going like hiking, like you find out these activities, you can start suggesting it and start seeding how are we going to hang out? How are we going to hang out? Again, find out what qualities and values that you both share. Compatibility, because you don't have time to waste. And again, if you're compatible, what do you do? Reward him a keto. Right? Maybe don't actually pat him on the head, but like, like hey, that, that is so cool that you like XYZ just like I do. Like, we are just like two peas in a pod and everyone here are just losers. Compatibility is about seeding the future once you have determined there might be one. You aren't simply like giving out your number, you aren't simply getting numbers. You have said, okay, he's comfortable, I found out that I like these things about him and he seems to like these things about me, let's meet up. Okay? You're just not like, okay, I got all these numbers and let me call everybody, right? Whether they're good or bad. Like, you know, it's not about just collecting, it's like how good are these leads of men. When it comes to getting a number, has everybody here like actually gotten the guy's number? It's not that big of a deal? Okay. Who hasn't like actually made a point of like getting a guy's number? All right, so there are a couple of you guys, a couple of you girls. Okay. Um, it's usually better to do an exchange. Like in today's day and age, he gets yours, you get his, you both have each other's number. Try to seed up the next time you guys meet up. Um, remember in C, you're finding these things that you guys like in common. Food, fitness, travel, and you're laying down the groundwork. Oh, that sounds so fun. Let me know when the, muse you know, the museum exhibit opens. Oh, let me know when um, the petting zoo opens. Let me know when, you know, the, um, the Korean fusion pop-up truck, you know, is around. I'd love to join you, okay? Seeding the next date. Future projected date. Now, if you're still like, this guy's kind of interesting, I don't know if there's really sparks, keep it simple. Do not, like, if he's like really enthusiastic, it's like, oh, I want to go to like Maestro or like, you know, something really fancy, expensive, but you're not, quite there like maybe you'll give him a chance but you're not like super like you, you don't know if he's like a complete yes to you like manage the expectation just say oh, let's meet for coffee let's meet for froyo and then from there like maybe if things sparks fly then you can do a bigger date right you need to manage the expectations because rightly or wrongly the more man spends the more he expects something to happen okay that is just the expectation, right or wrong. So manage that. Project the future date, all right? You aren't gonna simply be a passive participant in your dating life. You have both found out that you both love X, Y, Z. Like, have you girls ever done a date activity and you're completely fucking bored and you knew you are gonna be bored by going there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why put yourself through that torture? Why? Like, if you both find out you both like kayaking, skating, whatever it is, suggest that, okay? And know how you're gonna get his number and know how you're gonna just very subtly plant that idea of a date. And finally, D is for date ability. So here's a question I ask all of my students when they take a program with me. So guys, do you give good date? Do you give good date? <laughs> because, ladies, dating is a completely separate skill. It is not something that just magically happened. I guarantee it. 
right? I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine, Sarah. I was like, you know, I was like, what was like the best date you ever had? She's like, oh my god, it was like magical. Like we went to the sushi restaurant, and the the, the chef came out, and he just started talking to us, and we got like a, a free round of like sake, and then we were just gonna call it a night because it's just gonna be dinner. But he said like, oh, you know, right next door is my friend's birthday at this club. I think we can get a chance. It's like, oh yeah, okay. And like the bouncer saw us, and we were able to skip this line that was like massive. And you know, we went up to the VIP area and we're just popping bottles. Like it was amazing. It wasn't magic. It wasn't by coincidence that happened. Odds are that was planned. Okay. Dating is a skill that men in general have to learn, but so do you. Okay. Here's the thing. We all wish men were better daters, right? It goes both ways, right? Plus her little heart, her dark little heart, her black little heart, I have a friend, super attractive, goes on Tinder, okay, Cupid, and there are times where she will line up three dates in a night, and her entire, like, week is full. And I'm like, girl, like, why are you going on so many dates? You know, her reply was, Girls gotta eat. <laughs> so, giving good date is a learnable skill for both genders. Okay? So, ask yourself this is important. Um, Danny, Captain Dan, is very big on, on setting intentions. So everyone ever heard this formula, intention plus action equals results, right? Mm -hmm. But how much intention, how much action equals results? Anyone want to take a guess? How much of intention, how much action? Like numbers? Yeah, yeah, like percentage. How much attention? 60-40? So 60% attention and 40% action. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Someone said 50-50, well, right? I mean, it should be 50-50, but is it really mm -hmm. always? I feel like 10%. 10%. Um, shit, what was the first one? Yeah, intention. 10% intention, like everything is your action. Okay, gotcha. So you're saying more action. Yeah. So here's the truth. It's actually 99.99999% intention, 0. 000 000 000 000, 1 action. Because here's the thing about results, okay? And I believe Tony Robbins said this. Success without fulfillment is true failure. So in the dating realm, right, in the dating realm, let's say you just take action going on all these dates, and at the end, your success was going on a date, but you're unfulfilled, it was a bad date. So intention is the most crucial part because when you know, it's, it's a simple, very simple definition of intention, it's your why. Why are you going on this date? If you know your why, it doesn't matter where your actions are, it's just gonna flow because you just, Put it out there if you want to go woo woo. Spirituality, you attract it. So you're just going to start naturally. You just trust yourself. You're like, I want this. And it, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's you just want a boyfriend long term. Most of you said long term. But some said, I want to just have sex. But if your intention is true to yourself and aligned with who you want and what you, what you want at that moment, you will lead to sex. And at the end, you have sex with them, you're fulfilled. You're like, that was great sex. But that's what you wanted, so it's fine. But if you said you didn't want sex, you want to see if this guy's a good partner to date, dateability, and then you end up having sex, what happens? And it calls you. Yeah. And you, about sex, and you regret it because you did all the action, you went back with them and all that stuff, but your intention was not to do that. So it's staying true to what your intention is. So what's your Netflix and chill policy? That's, that's not a first date type of thing for me. Okay, so for you. Not even yeah. Like if we're truly like dating, like I don't, I can sit at home and watch Netflix by myself. I'm gonna date you. I'm gonna go out and do something. Like that. There you go. Your intention is not to sleep, mm -hmm. you know, because you want to get to know this person, right? But like I said, if it's okay if that's what you want. That wouldn't that means, right? Right. Yes. What that means, right? <laughs> so if, you want, if a man, if your intention is to have that one night, it set is. that tension yeah. and let the action just flow. Okay. And like I said, serious relationship. I know you might have the needs, the physical needs, but set the intention you want a long-term relationship. It's not about holding out or playing games. It's just like, this is my why, this is what I want. And staying true to that. Um, so, 
basically you control the expectations, right? You just, it's called honesty. The best way to see if you guys are able to date is just brutal honesty. Simple as just says, I just broke up from a long-term relationship and getting back into the dating scene. I'm doing the getting to know you without committing to more than that. So if a guy comes out right at you and says, hey, let's just go drink at my place, and you still have attraction to him, just be honest with him, like, hey, how about we try this place first? I actually want to get to know you better. If you go to the house or something, if he goes direct with the Netflix and show and you still like him, yeah, just be honest with him. Like, I want to get to know you better first before we do that. Um, but you could also go the other way. Like, your intention is to have sex and just have great, fulfilling sex. I'm not a relationship with a committed girl. I'm not looking to settle down. Most guys can get that in. Okay. So, dating, right? One of the biggest things about when you go on a date is be a team player. Let's say he gets the movie tickets. Here's the thing with men, and I'll speak from high. When a woman just offers, it just, I was like, wow, okay. But I still pay for it anyways. I'm just like, no, I got this. I got it, right? Even if she says, so it's very simple. It's like, I'll get the dessert. Like, I pay for dinner, right? Of course, as a man, I took her on data. But she says, let me get the dessert. Let's go for foil. Because the end, that's a lead-in, right? Basically, you're showing him, I want to continue to hang out after. Or I'll get the next round for that dinner. So you're leading him in the sense of like, hey, I'm still interested. And he's like, and he, and he feels good. He's like, wow, this woman is independent yet, lets me lead. So be a team player. I have a question. So is yes. that completely different? Is it the first date, you let him pay for everything, and then you text him the next day like, hey, dinner on me tonight? Yeah, that's that's being a team player. Yeah, that is that. If a man, honestly, if I heard that, but like, uh, wow, that's an awesome. Like, I'll cook you dinner tonight. But it didn't turn you off at the first day you handled everything. No, because here's the one thing that we or I or as a, you know we teach our students like if you ask her on a date, be the man who leads. There's generally an understood dating tradition that he who the person who asks on the date pays. If it's a date you'll pay. But it is very appreciated if the other person makes at least the attempt, even just the gesture. All right, especially if this guy's like really trying to impress you and is like wants to go X, Y, Z, and maybe it's a little bit out of his price range, but like he wants to impress you, and you do feel the spark, so you are willing to be that invested into him. Making the effort show goes a long way to at least emotionally support him at that risk that he's taking that he's investing so much now not beyond just financially but emotionally in time he's putting himself out there it's like i'm gonna pay a hundred dollars or whatever for this date right just making the effort is very appreciated but it is understood that if i ask i will pay yeah. and it's like a team thing you're already a team you're acting like a couple what couples are, uh, couples who've been in long-term relationships, right? They kind of share, like, hey, I'll get this, right? So you're kind of putting it out there. You're a team player, right? What's, like, a good way to gesture without, like... Without actually paying? <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. Because I feel like I'm too good at convincing them I'll pay for half or whatever. Like, well, just say, yeah. I don't know, just ask, We just yeah. gave a great example. I'll yeah. get the dessert. Oh, okay. Right? So don't now, don't right, just... Right. Put out your credit card, oh, let me, let's let's do that. Be like, right, yeah, yeah. that's awkward. But then, like, so the bill comes yeah. and you're just like, I'll get the dessert. That is so presumptuous. Well, okay, so I actually, <laughs> my friend took me, one of my girlfriends took me out for uh, my birthday. And she's actually one of my, like, one of just a friend of the year. Tell me the story. When we went on a date and the guy, yeah. literally, like, she paid half and she told her, hey, honestly, like, the fact that you, like yeah. pay for a date. She's honest. She's a very honest woman. She's like, I don't think I could date a guy yeah. like that. And he yeah. freaked out. Freaked out. Was, Are you kidding me? Like this twenty percent. But then I guess he got a tip from his sister and was like, Dude, what? you asked her yeah. on the date. Yeah. You led the date, right? So that's the thing. Yeah. Be if you say I'll, I'll pay for dessert, then you don't have to pay for dinner or a drink. Say I'll buy for the I'll buy the drinks later. Okay. Since uh, thank you, I really appreciate that you're showing appreciation. But let me get the drinks later. First round's on me. What about offering to pay the tip? Yeah, paying the tip, that's yeah. huge. paying for Uber. Have you guys Ubered there? There you go. Yeah. So it's being a team player. Interesting. You don't have to be the MVP because the guy's leading you, right? He's he's the he's the one who's leading. He's a point guard, but you can still be the one who gets the rebound kind of thing, you know. <laughs> go for the sports metaphor. Team, team player. You're being a team player. That's all that matters. Okay, so 
Another big thing is get excited about the date, especially if it's something you're about to do and he tells you, or even some guys don't tell you, but be excited. Well, also, like, again, in compatibility, you should have discussed this and seeded this. So if you both are into XYZ date activity and he's paying for it, get excited about it. Don't expect it like, well, of course he's, of course he's paying for everything. Yeah. Of course he's doing that for me. I mean, that just makes a guy feel really used. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even if your intention is to have sex, how much better is when you actually go on this amazing fun date and then have sex, right? It's just that much okay. better, right? Than just like, let's yeah. get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so why not have a date, right? And uh, the second thing is, just like the man should never be entitled to sex, don't feel entitled to go on fancy, expensive dates. I have a question, kind of going back a little bit. So, what if I'm the one to ask to go on a date? I've done that before, where I've like asked to go on a date. Do I like pay? I mean, he ended up paying for it anyway, but okay. like, there is a general expectation that the person who asks the date pays, but there's also a kind of male gender role that we are the ones that are going to pay regardless. Um, so there is that sort of like counterbalance. But if you are asking, you, you know, yeah. maybe have the cash at hand to pay for it, um, or you know, you just tell him to take one of my boot camps. <laughs> take my one of my boot camps, and he'll learn. Yeah, we'll learn him. Okay, so here's the big thing, right? Everyone has this rule, like, oh, I got his number, I'm not gonna message three days later. All this rules, like, oh, he shot me two texts, so oh, I'm gonna shoot him one text, right? Does anybody follow that? You know? <laughs> no. No. Okay. okay. No. Uh, I, I was about to. Used to. When I was dating, yeah. I did. When yeah. I was younger, when I was younger, so, you were like, yeah. Okay, oh, he said five yeah. minutes to text me back. I'm gonna text him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, right, right. I mean, today, like, it is so much about like instant messaging. Anybody that follows whether guy or girl, I'm like, you're an elder millennial. You're like the tail end of being a millennial. Well, I think the only reason why is that we kind of get like, like it. I think we get excited about the date because we get shown as we're a little desperate. We answer quick or we text back, and then instantly he texted us. It's like I think we're all concerned of how it makes us look. Rather than like playing games. Yeah. So, right. No, I I completely. It's like a false sense of like. Something. It's like a false like, sense. Damn, she has business. nothing else to do. Yeah. 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 I mean, part of it is going to be, you know, as, as guys like I hate texting, <laughs> just in general, um, and and so for some guys they're not playing those games. Obviously, you have some that do, but again, we're trying to find the guys that are like completely normal that aren't like totally like playing the field and they're not like timing things out and they're not like judging you. They're like, "Oh, 2 minutes. She's a desperation level 9." <laughs> like not doing that. Like these guys are like, "Oh, cool. She texted me back. Awesome." Yeah. But I feel like I've had conversations like with men and I'm like and that kind of gets brought, brought up like, "Oh, what are you are you more of a texter or are you like are you old school? Do you like phone conversations? I, in the yeah. morning, I feel like I have that conversation because I want to know before. I yeah. Depending upon the, like, the generation they yeah. are um, and you know how, again, as guys, we're just not as verbally communicative. Yeah. Right? Um, that might be something that you find out during compatibility. Because yeah. here's, the, here's the thing. Like, have you guys ever just even lost attraction or feelings for a guy because he called you? No, no. no. I've had that. I like, I, I called and she's like, oh, that's desperate. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, literally, I've also heard conversation. I remember at dinner, like, these girls behind me were, were talking and they were like, I met this guy. He was really cool. You know, gave, exchanged numbers and then he called me. Oh my God. How creepy. <laughs> right? It's like, again, this is like very much LA, which is a microcosm of maybe the entire United States of dating. But there is that, you know, you know, in general, if he's going to call, that does show a higher level of investment emotionally on his I, part to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. phone calls. Yeah. Nobody calls anymore, so you stand out. Exactly. Everyone just texts. Yeah, you can say like, hey, you know, hey, I'm about to get off work. Let me give you a call, or why don't you give me a call? That's so right. Cool. And quite frankly, a lot of guys will appreciate just talking on the phone more than just like, oh my god, more texting, more texting, more texting. What is this fucking emoji mean? You know how many guys have just talking bros with each other? It's like, 
what does this cat emoji mean? What does it mean? Like, we're asking each other, like, what are these emojis? My question is that, do you, wel do you have the, the woman welcome the call? Like, is that, do you yeah. need that so, well, signal? Or, uh, yeah. It is better to, ha I think, have phone conversations, but again, this is something that you might want to, some guys are like totally, they're just like, it's always on the phone. It's super annoying to me personally, but there are some guys like that that is part of their life. But I think a lot of other guys that are not like, their phone isn't blowing up, like they don't have 100 women texting them all the time. They're just kind of like, okay, I've got some friends that text and most of the time we, we talk. Like, you know, get on the phone, you know, see if he's comfortable with that. Right, just say like, hey, I'm about to get off work. Give me a call, or I'll give you a call. See how he responds, right? So I just want to go back to intention, right? So what we teach our students, male students, the intention of texting and calling is to get her on a date. Get her out, talk to a person. So what's your intention of texting? Honestly, don't try to connect over phone. That's, why not just connect in person? You could be body language, you can see the tone. So intention, when you guys text a man, this is where you can lead him. Like, hey, I really, I heard about, just lead in the text, find a spot for you to be like, I really heard about this cool Chinese place near me. Or I heard the uh, LACMA's having this exhibit. Yeah, it's like, oh, where are we on, on getting reservations at that one place that you talked yeah. about that I love? Lead him, su support him in making a date happen. And if the guy calls, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, and even in the conversation, lead him into the date. Don't have long talks, don't try to build comfort or connection on the phone. It's, that, that's well, at least we support our students by saying, get her out. The intention of text and phone is to go on a date. Don't try to build connection, don't try to talk about hobbies. No, get out on a date. It could be simple as coffee, low investment like JT said. Coffee, very simple. Um, so pick up the phone, calling is, once JT said, calling is not creepy. And don't be the elder millennial where you play games. I like how every guy just stops and just starts staring at her slides. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Um, I really don't like texting or calling. Is that something you should bring? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Smoke signals? Email? What do you want? I <laughs> bring up to be like, I'd rather just be person, so like, call me if you want to hang out kind of thing. Okay, well there has to be some sort of mode of communication, right? Well, yeah, but like, I just would rather not text at all. <laughs> okay, then just like, literally tell, just tell them like, that. Yeah. Just tell them that. That's what I, I, like, trust me, I, 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 like, hey, I prefer not for you to keep texting or calling, that seems suffocating to me, so can we make a deal like now we're going to meet and then keep going from there? Mm -hmm. That's what, because I personally don't, I don't like constant contact. Yeah. It's too overstimulating. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, I don't know what the statistics are, but I will, I will bet that a lot of guys just hate over texting in general. We learn it and we do it because we have to, because that's like the primary mode of communication. But it's generally, you know, not universal. I, I think it's like despised a lot, right? Uh, again, probably like the younger generation, all the newfangled technology, and all that kind of stuff, but whatever. So, right back at it. It always goes back to your intention. Why are you talking to this guy? What's your, what's your intention? If you, want to sex, if you want to have sex with them, support him. Like, oh, I know this really cool restaurant in this Thai place right here in my place. We should go there to eat, right? Then he has less challenges, like JT said, make it easy for him. And you be like, Oh, I, he knows that's near your place. Most, some guys will get the hint, but you know, you're supporting your place is right there. So you can have that romantic encounter that night. Um, if you want to date him long term, here's the thing about everything with dating, right? It's the experience. It's not that you went to Mastro's or a cafe or anything. It's like, what's the experience you had with him? Dating is an experience. And one thing we support with our guys is like, make it an experience for her. Doesn't matter what you do, as long as you had a great time, that's all that matters. So, suggest, make suggestions. And this, this whole thing that we're saying we help support and lead, most of you said you wanted a masculine male, right? A masculine male leads, he makes decisions, right? I'm not, I'm done with just my energy, right? You guys are masculine too, because you guys make decisions. But at this point, if you want a masculine male, more masculine, then you do the dance. You, you go back, you go into your feminine, Right? So you do the dance, let him lead, let him be the masculine male. There's nothing wrong with that. Let him like think that it was his idea. Yeah.
Um, but basically just going off of what he said, if there are a lot of sparks, then sure, the bigger the date, right? You know, the entire like amazing kind of first day where it sweeps you off your feet. Like I've done that. Like I, you know, first girlfriend, I was like, oh my God, this is like the first girl that really liked me. So I like, it was in college, right? So I was like completely broke, but I was like, I'm gonna borrow my friend's car. I'm gonna buy flowers. I'm gonna reserve like Bennigan's, table at Bennigan's, like super fancy as a poor college student, right? And that's great if there are a lot of sparks. But if there aren't a lot of sparks, manage expectations. Let them know it's still coffee, froyo, get to know you, okay? Now, if you do have a genuine emotional physical connection, fine to act on it, right? It's the entire like, idea of like, sex positive feminism. It's the 21st century, right? There's nothing wrong with sex. There's also nothing wrong with if you don't want to have sex, right? So long as you manage expectation and he isn't leading himself on, right? If there are no sparks, you know, let them down gently with honesty. We call it the shit sandwich. Give them a shit sandwich. Compliment, you know, but then like give them the bad news. Okay, it's like, um, again, it won't be that big of a deal to him if it was just like coffee. Right, but if he if you if he he thought there were sparks and he's like paying for all this kind of stuff and you're like oh I had a great day but like there's nothing between us like he's gonna get upset right mm -hmm. so again you manage expectations because you know unbeknownst to him you ladies are in the actual driver's seat right because you seated you seated these activities you were directing him as to what activity you wanted to do with him alternatively it's also a compliment if. Like, you want to have sex with him, and he's actually doing the, like, I like you enough that I don't want to sleep with you, right? I actually want to hang out with you. You'd be surprised by how many women have gotten really angry at me for that. Like, they get, like, legitimately upset. It's like, I'm actually trying to play the long road here, the long game, but they get angry or they start crying, and it's like, it's a mess, right? If he's actually making a point saying, like, I actually want to date you and not have sex with you, that means he's trying to plan like a little bit long term. Obviously, if your intention is you don't want any kind of strings, you don't want that kind of pressure of being in a relationship, let him know. Because some guys think that's their maneuver. Is like, if I play hard to get, she'll chase me, right? So understand that, con that conceit. And ultimately, the best dates are a shared experience. Okay, it's a shared experience. It's not about, you know, just because you went and you had dinner or you did you know, you got something out of it. It's something that you both experience together. Um, there's a way, and you guys ever heard of like that uh, 36 questions, you know, it went viral in the New York Times. It was about a psychologist by the name of Dr. Arthur Iran. Um, this is something I actually teach during my program with students. Actually sitting down with a woman and trying to get emotionally more deeper and available to her and her to him. There's an actual way to structure the idea of falling in love. Because that's what happened. Like the reporter actually did this and she actually started dating him. Right? Now, you know, it is a lot of questions and it's not like you have to memorize the questions. <laughs> there are apps for it. Like literally there are apps. These are just like really interesting type questions. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, who would you have dinner with? Right? It's more than like, what are your hobbies? What do you do for a living? Like, where are you from? Those are very kind of blasé questions. These are like interesting. Um, if you could be famous, what would you be famous for? Or you, you start to get really, really deep. And I can remember, you're answering, she's answering, both the guy and the girl. It's like, if the world ended tomorrow, what would you regret not doing? Like, that's really deep, right? At this point, you're eye gazing, maybe you're holding hands, and this is that feeling. You, if you are attracted to this guy, and you find out you're really compatible, and he has like, all these values that you appreciate, that you are looking for in a guy, well, guess what? Guide it down into an emotionally deeper level. It works for both men and women. Because there is strength in vulnerability when a man lowers his guard. And what were you doing in B? Making, yeah, lowering his guard so he felt safe with you, right? Because do you want a man that's always has his like, always like braggadocio, all machismo all the time? Right, that's not realistic. That's, that's, a, that's a farce, right? In general, men, 
we just use less words than you ladies. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. If you have any doubts as to whether he finds you attractive or not, look at his actions. Look at if he shows up. If he shows up, if he makes any kind of effort. Even like I have a students that are completely socially inept. They, they don't really even know like, like setting reservations because they're just not like really socially experienced. But they make that effort. They make the effort to, to try to figure things out. They make an effort as opposed to the guys like, hey, you know what? I'm good looking enough. I've had enough girls that chase me that I don't have to do anything. I know she's going to do it all for me. You guys ever date any, a guy like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Is he expending a lot of effort on you? No. Nope. Is he really that attracted to you? Nope. Look at his actions. If he likes you, he will show up for you. Don't listen to his words. Look at if he shows up to you. Okay, we're going to do a very quick exercise. You're going to have one minute to uh, take a piece out. of paper and so pass it on. Very simple. For the one minute, what do I want in a man and what do I not want in a man? All right, why should kill this activity? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed by Z blank sheets. I have one. Okay. So like for one minute. I have one. Laura, I mean, really think about this, right? I know usually you can have a longer list, but due to time, we're going to keep it short. So think about this as your top five, okay? Top five, you must have this in a man. And top five, I don't want this in man. Kind of, it could be rule breakers. Is this long-term men or short-term? Whatever, whatever you're feeling. What, whatever whatever you're stage in life that you are now. Yeah, okay. whatever your condition is right now at this moment. So we got one minute. Go. What do you want and what do you not want? As long as you have one list filled out, it, it'll, it's going to make sense. At least one side. All right, at least everyone, everyone has one side of this? Mm-hmm. Okay. So for the next part of the exercise, circle the quality quality in what I do want a man that you actually don't have. So look on the side you want, right? And this is honest feedback for yourself, right? Just look in the mirror and say, out of the qualities I want in a man, what is I don't have yet? And this is being honest. Mm-hmm. Just being brutally honest, just circle the ones that you don't have. On both sides? Yes, so on this side, what you, what you don't want a man, what is the quality you have? So what is something that you do? So for example, when I did this exercise, right? Um, I circled the qualities that I don't care what other people think. I, I want a woman who doesn't care what other people think, and I want a woman who knows her work. I have to circle those two. And this is, this is here's the thing, we're being a little nice. We were supposed to do it with peers. Your peers will give you that honest feedback, like what trait are you not portraying? What's your way of being that you're not doing? So circle right now, real quick. Yeah, I guess like an example might be like you want a man, hypothetically speaking, with sense of humor, right? And you're someone that just you know has no sense of humor. Exactly. Right. So how about how are you open to sharing? Just give one example. Oh, like shared outlook on life. So for you, what's your outlook in life? Um, like. Or what do you want in the man first? What kind of outlook do you want him to have? Uh, I want him to. Oh my gosh, what am I trying to remember? Because we did this exercise. Yeah. Well, let's keep something. Okay, what's it's something like else? Shared politics. Yeah, shared politics, like worldview. Okay, so let's say. Um, Someone sounds like worldly, cosmopolitan, educated. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, educated, right? So. I mean, if you did not, if you're not, if you're not keeping up to date your politics, you gotta be honest with yourself and circle that because you want that in a man, but you don't do that yourself. You don't watch TV on politics, and you don't. Yeah. And you want a man that way, right? Okay. So everyone circle a couple. Yes. So anyone want to share what they circle in both lists? Mm-hmm. So the first list, what do I want a man? And you circle that you don't have. Okay. I actually wrote that I wanted him to be a leader, and I circled it because I'm. Yeah. Usually shy away from leading, and then also in, in the same on the I don't want a passive guy, and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of passive. There you go. That's a great <laughs> example. That's a great example. Okay, anyone else want to share? Okay. Okay. Um, for the one that I want them to have, I said to hold a conversation. 
and I like, can't hold a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then, um, and I, ones that I don't want, it was kind of harder because I think like two of mine were like someone who's forceful and someone who takes up space. And I think I can do that. Okay. But okay. Yeah. not in the way that I don't want it. Gotcha. I could see how I would do that. Yeah. I can't hold a conversation, so. <laughs> no, that, that's it. It's like, yeah, you circled that you want a man who can hold a conversation, but yet you can't, right? Okay, there's one more, one more, and one more share. Oh, yeah. Okay, since we're making eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> Let me in there. Let me in, I can show. Um, I said I wanted a man that listens, and that is a trait that I am building. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Um, no, because I didn't finish my don't want list. Okay. So, <laughs> the purpose, the intention of this game is would you date you? Because here's the honest truth. It's ways of being. Um, you attract who you are as a being. What you put out to the world. You want a leader. You get to be a leader yourself. Right? You want to be, you want a vulnerable man. But yet you close off all the time. You're like, no, right? So that's that's the biggest thing. And uh, my request of you is actually do this exercise outside this room and from friends. Get honest feedback. Do the traits and circle the traits, and your friends will do that. So basically, you will stay up here, and your friends, you speak out your traits that you want in a man, and they're like, you don't have that. That's why. That's why I did. I had friends tell me you didn't have that. You didn't have that. You didn't have that. It's like, damn. Because uh, people will give you honest feedback, but you got to request that from that, right? So it's a way of being. If you want a certain type of man with certain type of traits and certain traits that you have, then you get to do that yourself first and you track by your ways of being. And if the answer is no, when you ask yourself, right, look in the mirror tonight, ask yourself, would you date you? And if the answer is no, well, through this and through the journey you're going through with Shan, is that you have the tools to make it a yes. And then that's the most important part. With us at AB Strength, we want to give men this hope. You won't date yourself, you get to use the tools to make it a yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yes. You keep doing you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> You're just perfect the way you are. <laughs> um, final takeaways for D, date ability, is if you want the man of your dreams, be the woman of your dreams first. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that we say to our like students. If you want the woman of your dreams, be the man of your dreams first, right? Because, you know, as a guy, I cannot control what other people do. I've been rejected for every reason under the sun, for being short, for being Asian, for everything. I can only improve myself so that I stack the deck in my favor and say like, hey, this is the best presentation of who I am. I worked on myself. You like it or you don't, okay? There are no Jedi mind tricks. I wish there were, but there are no Jedi mind tricks of seduction. Secondly, have fun and be proactive on the date. Again, it's called date ability. You have the ability to go on these dates, to have fun on these dates. All right, you are not a passive dater. You are in the driver's seat as well as as him. And finally, know your intention. What's your Netflix and chill policy, all right? What's your intention for him and act on it, all right? If you're wanting to have like amazing monkey sex, go for it. If you wanna have a relationship, act on that, all right? Know your intention when it comes to the date itself. And finally, I wouldn't be the world's number one Asian dating coach. If I didn't point out ladies, open up your dating options, okay? Whether you're dating an Asian guy, a black guy, a white guy, Hispanic guy, like I have dated all types of women. I encourage my students to date all types of women. So ladies, <laughs> right? So ladies, if you have only stuck within your race, I'm saying why limit yourself? Why limit yourself to just one group of guys? Whether it's race or height or, or whatever it is. You'll deepen your dating options, but most importantly, your kids will look beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Shannon. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Courtney.
Courtney. Um, I came to the ABC Attraction class um, mainly because I'm a woman who really knows what she wants out of a man. But I, what I really picked up was really cool is like breaking down the formula of the ABCs of knowing like the attraction, the banter, the compatibility, and the actual dateability to be able to maneuver exactly what my intentions are with a man, and being also able to know those inner workings on helping that man and woman to connect. So I really, really appreciate it being able to see like what I can, what tools I can use to weed out and seed out who I actually want to be with. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check 